One, two, three, go. Thanks, man. Nice. A little trade back and forth. Yeah. So in this video, we're adding a few more advanced concepts about playing a longer chord structure. So now we've got a four chord structure that's moving by a little bit faster. And we're also trading back and forth. And this between bass and piano creates a really interesting opportunity in terms of the sound and where we each play when each other is soloing. So, Kenny, why don't you explain what the chord progression that we played was and how it works? Sure. The chord progression was four chords, uh, C, no, sorry, G, C, G, D, G, C, G, D. And it really pays to memorize these chord progressions. I find uh, over the years, like I'd be daydreaming on a bus or something or waiting in a lineup. And, and sometimes our brains get all frustrated with with worried about other other things, you know, and, and sometimes you can't just can't do anything about that. But I became a, a much better musician by using my thinking speed wisely, my thinking time wisely, and, and finding those times when I'm away from my instrument that I can memorize these structures. So as an advanced level player, uh, uh, this is a great chord progression to use because it's used in a lot of songs. And uh, so it's quite straight ahead. The, the G for a bar, we did it, and then the C for a bar, back to the G, and then on to the Excellent. Now, in terms of cueing each other and understanding form, it's really important to sort it out ahead of time so that you know what to look for when you're cueing someone else. So, in this example, I knew that Kenny was going to be soloing first. So, while he's soloing, I'm aware that at some point he's going to be flipping it back over to me. And then, also, when I'm finished soloing, I'm thinking about how I got I can't just stop. I have to be thinking about where the ending is and how to flip it back. It's kind of like switching roles the same way that uh, four actors who have to play eight parts might do on a stage. You know, when, uh, when an actor goes backstage and now you come back out as something else, uh, you have to switch roles. And so traditionally, if I'm playing with, uh, if I don't have a bass player in the band, then my left hand uh, is usually going to be playing the G note for the bass note. But since I have a bass player, I can free up my left hand to play the chords and my right hand to play melodies up here. So usually I'm exploring melodies that are found within the chords themselves. So if I play my G voicing here, I can just basically switch to the chord shape. That's all I'm thinking about. And then I'm just arpeggiating off of the notes that are in the chord tone. So my role changes. When Todd starts to solo, he's got a low register instrument. So his notes are all down here. So when he took his solo, I ended up playing something that was light and soft up here so he could really stand out because our job is, uh, as friends and as musicians is to support each other. Right? This is especially important when you have a singer or anyone who might be singing. Either one of us could be singing as well as playing. And the voice is particularly fragile and the softest instrument in any band. So uh, always make sure that even uh, whatever instrument you're playing, you can hear the voice and you're not making that person uh, shout too hard. Otherwise, tuning can be really affected for the voice if they yeah. have to push too hard. A good thing too, I, I, I can't remember who told to me, it might have been a band teacher, but they said always... Think of whatever the quietest instrument is, and if you can hear it, then you're not playing too loud. But if you can't hear it, you're playing too loud. So That's it's kind of a simple it. thing. I always think 
What's the quietest instrument in the band and can I hear it? <laughs> 